woke up to the world's unknown. Where waves is flashing into your soul. Where waters is stronger than rocks. And where rays of sunset blends into the sea. So I sit back and enjoy the ride. And get washed up on a deserted island. And explore the locals living history. Perhaps even find a hole in the wall. Or discover a whole new world to be on top of. Welcome to the Visayas Group of Islands. Hi there learners! In this lesson, you will be informed about the Visayas group of islands. You will be traveling and learning the different folk arts and crafts from these different places. You will become familiar with the different designs, motifs, architectures, and history of their attires, fabrics, and crafts used by the people of different provinces. This journey will help you appreciate the rich culture and tradition of the Philippines. After going through this lesson, you are expected to identify the characteristics of arts and crafts in specific areas in Visayas group of islands. Bohol, Cebu, Iloilo, Samar, Leyte, Negros, Panay, and other island groups. Specifically, you are expected to identify the characteristics of arts and crafts in a specific areas in Visayas group of islands, and then create an artwork using recyclable materials, and last one, develop the value of being resourceful in using recyclable materials. But before we move on to our lesson, I will give you another map diary as your guide. As we go along the lesson, collect the needed information to complete the map. Identify the provinces, places where the following arts and crafts originated. Here is the map of Visayas group of islands. We have Western Visayas, Central Visayas, and Eastern Visayas. And this is your map diary. Come on, let us now identify the characteristics of arts and crafts of Visayas group of islands. We will going to explore the different textiles, 
crafts, festivals, and architectures. Visayas, also known as the Visayas Group of Islands. Visayas is a collection of large and small islands in the central Philippines. The seven main islands are Bohol, Cebu, Leyte, Masbate, Negros, Panay, and Samar. First, we will going to define what is textile. A textile is a type of cloth or woven fabric. Here are the examples of textiles. Come on! Let's start our journey in exploring and identifying the different textiles in specific areas and provinces of Visayas group of islands. Come on guys! Let us start our journey to Iloilo. Iloilo Iloilo City is located in the southern shores of Panay Island. The city has a number of museums ranging from fields of ancient and contemporary art, cultural, and economic history to science. Museums and art galleries are the repositories of Iloilo's rich and glorious history and culture. The province is blessed with unbelievable islands, hidden caves, and lagoons majestic mountains and falls, and a full lineup of heritage homes and century-old churches that stand today as living museums. Come on, let's identify their textile. Patadjong Iloilo, tagged as the textile capital of the Philippines, is known in weaving Patadjong, a native tube wrapped around a piece of cloth worn by women as a skirt and is usually paired with kimona. This hablon, or hand woven fabric used for clothes, is distinctly ilongo in color and character. It is often colorful and feature geometric designs. It is traditionally made of locally made fibers such as piña, abaca, and cotton. Now, we will continue our journey from Iloilo to Kalibo, Aklan. Aklan Officially, the province of Aklan is a province in the Western Visayas region of the Philippines. Its capital is Kalibo. The province is situated in the northwest portion of Panay Island, bordering Antique to the southwest and Capiz to the east. Aklan faces the Cebuyan Sea and Romblon Province to the north. Okay, now let's identify their textile. Parong Tagalog in Aklan Pinyo weaving is an age-old tradition in Aklan, the leading manufacturer of pinya cloth in the country. Known as the Queen of Philippine Fabrics, pinya cloth is one of the legacies left to us by the Spaniards during their occupation of the country. This was the prime material used in making Barong Tagalogs and Saya. Making piña cloth is a careful process. Sometimes it takes months before it transforms into wearable outfit. Let's watch the video on the next slide.
from Kalibo Aklan, we will going to cross islands to Negros. Negros. This island is a boot shape and a fourth largest island in the Philippines. This is located in the Visayas group which consists of Negros Occidental and Negros Oriental. This island has a lot of tourist attractions like the other islands in the Philippines. Come on! Let us identify the characteristics of their textile. Sinamay Sinamay, a term referring to woven abaca, was the traditional clothing material of Filipinos. This textile is made from abaca twine and indigenous plants similar to banana. Sinamay is of thinless tissue but almost transparent and far more durable than the fabrics made from pineapple fiber. Sinamay materials are used in making gift boxes, decorative accessories, wall coverings, draperies, fashion accessories, footwear, tabletop accessories, and more. Come on, let's watch the video on the next slide. Are you enjoying our journey? Come on, let us again review the different textiles in selected areas and the provinces of Visayas Group of Islands. We have Patadjong in Iloilo, Barong Tagalog in Aklan, and Sinamay in Negros Island. Okay, so before we move on in identifying the characteristics of crops, in some areas and provinces in Visayas group of islands, let us first define what is crafts. Craft is an activity involving skills in making things by hand. Okay, so let's continue our travel in the islands of Visayas. From Negros, we will going to cross island to Capiz. Capiz. Capiz is located at the northeastern portion of Panay Island, bordering Atlan to the north, Antique to the west, and Iloilo to the south. Capiz is known for the Placuna Placenta oyster shell that has the same name locally and is used for decorations and making lampshades, trays, windows, and doors. Likewise, the province is known as the seafood capital of the Philippines and was among the top 10 most frequently visited places. Come on, let us identify the characteristics of their crafts. Capiz shell or capiz shell Capiz shell comes from a marine mollusk which is abundant in the province of Capiz. Its outer shells are bleached and dried before being pressed or cut into different shapes. These shells are formed into various crafts products like curtains, candle holders, chandeliers, 
Windows, and many more. Let us watch the next video how the people in Capiz harvest these shells and turn it into products. From Capiz, we will going to fly in the island of Cebu. Cebu Cebu is a significant cultural center in the Philippines. The imprint of Spanish and Roman Catholic culture is evident. Its capital is Cebu City, the Queen City of the South, and considered as the oldest city. The island also has its own tourist attractions like white sand beaches and terrains. Okay, let us identify the characteristics of crabs in this island. Furniture of Cebu Cebu is known as the furniture capital of the Southeast Asia. Most of the products are made from local and indigenous resources. The materials used are readily accessible in their environment like coconut, cassava, waste wood, or even used paper. The furniture only uses minimal number of synthetic products and other materials for supports and structures which make them eco-friendly and sustainable. Their craftsmanship is a combination of generations of know-how in handicraft and weaving processes with the touch of the latest methods of furniture creation. Okay, let's watch the highlights of their crafts on the next slide.
From Cebu, we will go into the next island, the island of Bohol. Bohol Bohol is a province of the Philippines in the country's central Visayas region. It comprises Bohol Island in numerous smaller surrounding islands. Bohol is known for coral reefs and unusual geological formations, notably the Chocolate Hills. On the main island near the town of Carmen, these 1,200 or so symmetrical mounds turn cocoa brown in the dry season, contrasting with the surrounding jungle's greenery. Let us identify what is the famous crops in this island and its characteristics. Antiquera Baskets of Bohol Antiquera Bohol is famously known for its basket weaving industry. Antiquera baskets, including other native products such as hampers, home furnishing, wall decors, furniture, bag and fashion accessories, come in all shape and sizes. These handicrafts are made of whatever native material is on hand, from bamboo, rattan, wicker, nito, buri, sigid, and other vines. For years, this has been the town's main source of income and earned them the title, Basket Capital of Paul. On the next slide, we will going to watch a clip from a news highlighting the baskets of Antiquera Bohol. From the island of Bohol, we will continue our journey going to the island of Sama. Samar Samar is the third largest island in the Philippines, located in the eastern Visayas within central Philippines. The island is divided into three provinces, Samar, Northern Samar, and Eastern Samar. Samar is the easternmost island in the Visayas. About a third of the island is protected as a natural park known as the Samar Island Natural Park. The island is separated from Leyte by the San Juanito Strait, which at its narrowest point is only about 2 kilometers across. Come on, let's take a look at their traps. Banig the banig or mats in Basay Samar measure around 2 by 3 meters. A banig is usually made from tikog, a special reed grass which grows in swampy or wet areas along rice fields and has solid, jointless, and usually triangular stems. The colorful banigs are more expensive than simple ones. From sleeping mats, the weavers have produced other products such as bags, Decors, placemats, furniture mattings, and other decorations. Okay, so before we continue our journey, we're going to have a short review about the crafts made from the specific areas and provinces in Visayas group of islands. We have the Kapi shell in Capiz, furniture in Cebu, Antiquera baskets in Bohol, and Banig in Samar. Are you ready to continue our journey? Let's go! Now, we will going to explore the three of the known Philippine festivals here in the Visayas group of islands. Fiestas in the Philippines can be religious, cultural, or both. 
Several of these are held to honor the local Roman Catholic patron saint, to commemorate local history and culture, to promote the continued products, or to celebrate a bountiful harvest. They can be marked by holy masses, processions, parades, theatrical play and reenactments, religious or cultural rituals, trade fairs, exhibits, concerts, pageants, and various games and contests. However, festivals in the country are not limited to Christian origins. Many festivals also focus on Islamic or indigenous concepts. Come on, let's continue our journey. From Samar Island, we will going to fly back to Kalibo, Aklan. Dubbed as the mother of all Philippine festivals, the Atiatian festival is widely known not just in the Philippines but across the world. Atiatian festival meaning is to be like Atis or Aitas, Aklan province's natives. The Filipino Atiatihan Festival of Kalibo Aklan is known as the mother of all festivals. It is held every third Sunday of January in honor of the arrival of the Santo Nino in Cebu. The highlights of the festival is the street dancing competition of the different groups representing different tribes. They wear colorful costumes including the headdresses that are made of abaca fibers, shells, feathers, bamboo, plant leaves, cogon, and sugarcane flowers. All the participants cover themselves with soot or black powder to look like the Ati, natives of Aklan. Let us watch a short documentary highlighting the celebration of Ati Atihan Festival.
From Kalibo Aklan, we will going to witness the festival held in Bacolod. Bacolod Officially, the city of Bacolod is the first-class, highly urbanized city on Negros Island in western Visayas, Philippines. It is the capital of the province of Negros Occidental, where it is geographically situated but governed administratively independent from it. It is notable for its Mascara Festival held during the third week of October and is known for being a relatively friendly city as it bears the nickname the City of Smiles. The Mascara Festival is celebrated every October in Bacolod. Mascara comes from two words, mas meaning crowd, and cara which means face. Bacolod City got the nickname of the City of Smiles because of the smiling faces of the mask. During the old days, their masks were adorned with locally found materials like coconut sprouts, colorful betel nuts, violet, yellow or red San Francisco leaves, and annatto, more locally known as achuete, serves as the natural coloring. Over the years, mask designs at present have evolved from plain and simple to very decorative. Let's watch the highlights of the festival on the next slide. Okay, from Bacolod City, we will going to fly to our next destination, the island of Leyte. Leyte Leyte is an island in the Visayas group of islands in the Philippines. It is the 8th largest island in the country by land area. 
This island is notable for its Pintados Kasadjaan Festival. The Pintados Kasadjaan Festival of Leyte is a cultural religious celebration to honor Santo Niño or the Holy Child. It features the unique culture and colorful history of the province through dance presentations. The word pintado refers to the body tattoo of the native warriors. To resemble these tattooed warriors, the dancers' bodies were decorated with tattoos from head to toe with beautiful designs and incredible styles. Let's watch the highlight of Pintados Festival on the next slide.
So these are the three of the known Philippine festivals held in the Visayas group of islands. Ati-Atihan Festival in Aklan, Mascara Festival in Bacolod, and Pintados Kasadyaan Festival in Leyte. Aside from textiles, crafts, and festivals, we also have architectures. Architecture is the art and science of designing buildings and other physical structures. Come on, let us continue our journey to the islands of Visayas. From Bacolod, we will to travel back in Panay Islands, specifically in Iloilo City. Iloilo City is also home to many Spanish colonial churches, grand vintage houses, and old commercial and institutional buildings dating back to its heyday as the Queen City of the South. Molo Church Molo Church is a famous Spanish colonial church and heritage site in the province of Iloilo. It is known for the famous red spires or pyramidal structure on the top of the building that crown its tall bell towers and as the feminist church because of the all-women ensemble of saints represented in 16 statues hanging on the aisle pillars. Built in 1831, Molo Church stands as a reminder of Iloilo's rich history and a monument for Ilongo's artistry. The church displays a fusion of Gothic and Romanesque architectural styles. This church is made of coral rocks glued with a mortar made from egg whites mixed with the sand. Let's watch the video on the next slide.
from Iloilo, we will travel him back to Negros. Negros Occidental, specifically in Talisay City, is known for its architecture called the Ruins Mansion. The Ruins Mansion The Ruins Mansion is one of the most iconic tourist destinations in Talisay City, Negros Occidental. It is known as the Taj Mahal of Negros and Taj Mahal of the Philippines due to its romantic history. The ruins is said to be the remains of the 10-bedroom Italianate mansion built by Don Mariano Ledesma Laxon in memory of his wife, Maria Braga, who had died during the pregnancy of his 11th child. During the World War II, Filipino guerrillas employed by the U.S. Armed Forces intentionally set the building on fire in order to prevent invading Japanese forces from being able to use the building as the headquarters. The intention was to burn it to the ground. Despite being burned slowly for several days, the walls and foundation of the mansion remained stable. Even today, the design is still evidently elegant and the color changes from white to gray and orange to red as the sunset touches the structure. Come on, let's watch the video on the next slide.
from the ruins mansion of Talisay City, Negros Occidental, we will going to fly and visit the Baklayan Church in the island of Bohol. In our last destination, we will going to dug up the history of this church located in Bohol. The Baklayan Church The Baklayan Church of Bohol is considered to be one of the oldest churches in the Philippines. According to history, some 200 native forced laborers constructed the church from coral stones. They used bamboo to move and lift the stones in position and used the white of a million eggs as to cement them together. Okay, so those are some of the known architectures in the Visayas group of islands. We have the Molo Church in Iloilo, the Ruins Mansion in Talisay City, Negros Occidental, and Baklayan Church in Bohol. That's the end of our trip in the island groups in Visayas. Before we go back home, we will have a short recap on our lesson. Visayas group of islands is composed of seven main islands. Bohol, Cebu, Leyte, Masbate, Negros, Panay, and Samar. In terms of textiles, we identified the characteristics of Barong Tagalog in Aklan, Sinamay in Negros Island, and Patadjong in Iloilo. We also identified the crafts made especially in the different provinces in Visayas like Capiz Shell in Capiz, Furnitures in Cebu, Banig of Samar, 
and Antikera Baskets of Bohol. We also watch the three of the known Philippine festivals here in Visayas, namely Ati Atihan Festival in Aklan, Mascara Festival in Bacolod, and Pintados Kasadjaan Festival in Leyte. We also visited different architectures like the Molo Church of Iloilo, Ruins Mansion in Talisay City, Negros Occidental, and the Baclayon Church of Bohol. So before we end up our lesson, answer this question in the comment box below. What have you learned on this lesson? Okay? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day and God bless!